Hello and welcome to another video. <laughs> this one's actually about a bit of work code. Uh, I almost broke Sentry. Fortunately, Sentry's open source, so I can tell you all about it. Uh, but I made a cool little bit of tech that helped me avoid making a mistake. And so I wanted to show you the workflow that I did to do that. Uh, we're gonna be looking at some AST stuff. We're also gonna be looking at a special feature of my text editor. Some other text editors support this, but not Vim. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it and show you. Okay, so I'm gonna start by cloning Sentry. Oops, did I clone it already? Nope. Okay, clone uh, Sentry Sentry. And let's actually do depth equals one just so it clones a little bit faster. Uh, but the context of this is I'm going to show you a patch that I made and some of the stuff that I had to do to fix it. My initial attempt at the patch actually broke one of the Sentry endpoints and it was crashing like this. And I'm gonna show you how I used the AST module <laughs> down here to make sure that I didn't run into anything else that broke in that way. And this happened while I was trying to upgrade Click, a command line tool library from 7.x to 8.x, and there was a breaking change in 8.x dealing with default values and blah, blah, blah. This is long and kind of hard to read, so I'm just going to skip over it. Let me show you the basics of the problem as well. Um, there is There was an option here. Uh, if an option had a custom type and a default of none, uh, in 7.x, click would pass none into this type, and in 8.x, it would not. And so that was kind of the breaking change that I was looking for. Basically, something that had a custom type and a default value. Uh, so the first thing that I wanted to do is find all of the cases inside of Sentry that had those particular things. Now I'm looking for click.option as a default of something, and it has a type of something. So I decided to make a little AST parser to find that. Uh, so we're going to do t.py. This is going to look a lot like a linter. Uh, I actually made a linter for Flake 8, which I'll show you in the description. Uh, but this is going to follow basically the same approach, but it'll be a little bit simpler. So we're going to make a node visitor, ast.nodeVisitor. And we'll fill that out in a little bit. I usually pass in file name here, self.filename equals none. And we need a little bit of boilerplate to run it against files. Raise system exit main. Make a little main function. And we're going to pass in file names here. Hard parse. Uh, Parser.add arguments. Add argument. Uh, file names. Nargs equals plus. You can also do star there. Parse args. Okay. Uh, so basically what I want to do is I want to loop over all the files, load their AST, and then try and find a call site that looks similar to this click dot option. Now, in some cases, I could just get grep. If they were directly in line, I could look for click dot option with default and type, but sometimes they will span multiple lines, such as this one down here, and then grepping gets a lot more difficult. I could, of course, use multi-line grep, but the AST is going to get us very, very close to exactly what we want here, and so that's why I chose this approach. Or file name in args dot file names uh, visitor equals node visitor of file name and then we're going to do visitor visitor dot visit tree but we need to get the tree with open file name basically just doing a little ast parse of the contents here and then visiting them with this. And we'll write some special code inside this node visitor where if it finds that particular pattern, it will you know, notify us of that. Okay, just want to check that we are... Oh, this is going to run the linting with <laughs> Sentry's linting. I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll skip that. All right, let's, uh, let's get started with our node visitor here. And just to show you what this looks like, we're going to run this as Python 3, well, git ls files python, and we're going to call xargs python 3 t.py that's going to run this little script against every python file in our code base uh, and so you can see right now it runs for a little bit and much slower than i expect well maybe this computer is just slower and that's fine uh all right so now let's try and find that particular bit of ast node that we're looking for so we're looking for an ast.call here i usually like to set up ast pretty uh via activate just so I can visualize what that's going to look like and, and what attributes we're going to look at. So if we do ASD pretty dev standard in, and we have a call which has a default equals none, for instance, that's going to give us a call. So we're going to do visit 
go. And we always want to do self.generic visit at the end of this, otherwise it won't recurse properly. Probably make a linter rule for that. Uh, and inside the call, we are looking at the keywords attribute and the arg attribute of each keyword. Okay, so found keywords equals a set uh, for keyword in node dot, we're looking at a node that looks like this. Um, we are going to look for keywords. Keywords, if keyword dot arg, actually that is not none, because uh, it'll be none for splat arguments, I think. Yeah, so we'll get none for splat arguments, so we're just gonna do this. Uh, found keywords dot add keyword dot arg. Actually, we could probably just do this and say that this is a set of stir or none. It doesn't really matter. Of course, you don't need the type annotations, but I find it best practice to type annotate things anyway. I only did this because MyPy is going to complain about this down here. Actually, maybe it won't. Although, I don't know. <laughs> We're not going to run MyPy here, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we also want to limit it to specifically calls that look like this click.option call here. Uh, so right now we're going to be looking at this name here, but if we set that to click.option, for example, we will get an attribute here for func. So we want to say if is instance node.func ast.attributes, so we're looking specifically for attributes, and uh, node.func dot value is an is a name and node.func dot atter is equal to option uh, node dot func dot value dot id is equal to click so this is specifically filtering it down to calls that are a call with a function being an attribute that has click as the base part of it and then option being the attribute. Uh, otherwise, we don't care about the call. So we're going to find our found keyboards keywords here. We can actually just make this a list comprehension. Uh, keywords equals, or set comprehension. The cheaty way to do that. Nice little... Nice little refactor here. Not that we need to do that during a video, but that's fine. And we're specifically looking for something that has the type keyword argument and the default keyword argument. So if keywords is greater than or equal to type and default, uh, then we want to, let's just print the file name and the line number for now. We're actually gonna adjust what gets printed here to take advantage of a cool feature that my text editor supports. Uh, file name and no dot line number. Okay, let's rerun our xargs again. It's a little while. Uh, file name, oh, that should be self file name. <laughs> Do that again. Uh, takes a little while. Okay, none. Oh. <laughs> oh. Of course, I forgot to do this. <laughs> um. We can also speed this up a little bit by doing git grep dash l click. Um, yeah, let's just sort of do that. We'll filter things down a little bit. Git grep dash l click in Python files, and then that'll filter down those. Okay, cool. So we found a bunch of files that have this problem. Um, and we could manually open each of these up, jump to line 395, and poke around here, and then audit that way. But that takes too much time. So let's do a little trick here which some uh, text editors support. So for instance, if I do nano plus, or sorry, babby, because <laughs> we're using my text editor. Uh, nano is an alias to babby. If we do babby plus 395 and then a file name, it's going to immediately jump to that line for us. So we don't have to you know, open it up and scroll down and that sort of thing. And if we chain this together with multiple of these, so let's say we also wanted to look at line 440, oops, of, of that same file. We can chain two of these together. It'll open one of them at 395. Then if I close that file, it's gonna open up the next one at line 440. And so we can basically step through each of these options over and over. Now doing this all manually is a pain, so we can make our little thing print that out for us. Now I mentioned earlier, this doesn't work in Vim. Uh, Vim, it works fine for the first file, but it doesn't work after that for whatever reason. 
I don't know the reason for that, but um, so now if we do this again, we get this as our output, and we can run that as a subshell here. So let's do it. Yeah, we can do it here. That'd be this, and it'll open up every single one of those files. So you can see one of 26, and it allows us to quickly audit whether these fall into that same category. They have uh, a type that's not one of the primitive types, and it has a default value. In this case, it's fine, they both match. And I basically just went through every single one of these calls and made sure that it was correct. Basically stepping through each and every file and making sure that I didn't break any other part by upgrading that version. I didn't find any others, but this was kind of a, a useful, neat little way to audit the code base. Um, and I also documented that in my pull request. I was like, here's the node visitor that I wrote. This actually looks very similar. Oh, I did it in a dumber way. These two variables don't do anything. <laughs> well, you can see it was partway through a refactor and I didn't bother running linters on it, but it's, it's basically the same that I just wrote for you now. Um, and I was able to use this as well. Also, I wanted to show you that it doesn't work in Vim. So if we, uh, where's the one where I, yeah. So if we do this with Vim, it'll open up the, the second plus number. So we got, we got 440 here. And if we do next, it opened the same file twice at line 440. So, oops, Q. So Vim's a little buggy, <laughs> but it works fine in, in Mabby. I believe it also works in Nano as well. We do nano, uh, we get 395 and we get 440. So it works fine in nano. I don't know about Emacs. I don't think I have Emacs installed. Yeah. But works great in Babby. So <laughs> Babby better than Vim confirmed. <laughs> anyway, this is kind of a neat little workflow. So I wanted to show you some, you know, real world, neat little AST fun stuff and a neat little feature in my text editor and how I was able to safely upgrade click without breaking Sentry, because that would have been unfortunate. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you found that useful. Uh, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.